Welcome back to The Lost Tactician, where the forgotten wisdom of our ancestors meets the raw edge of survival. Today we're going to shatter everything you thought you knew about ancient ingenuity. Forget the primitive stereotypes. What if I told you that Iron Age communities, thousands of years before microscopes and germ theory, were engineering sophisticated water filtration systems that could rival some methods we use today? Prepare to witness the forgotten genius of people who turned survival into science, one layer of sand and charcoal at a time. Picture yourself 3,000 years ago, standing at the edge of a river that cuts through your settlement. The water looks clear enough, perhaps even inviting under the morning sun, but every sip you take is a gamble with death itself. Cholera, dysentery, typhoid fever, these invisible killers lurked in every untreated water source, turning something as essential as drinking into an existential threat. In the densely packed emerging cities of the Iron Age, where human and animal waste accumulated near water sources, contamination was inevitable. Entire communities could be decimated by waterborne illness, their survival hanging on a solution they couldn't see but desperately needed to find. Yet our Iron Age ancestors didn't simply accept this fate. Through generations of observation and accumulated wisdom, they developed an arsenal of techniques that transformed deadly water into something drinkable. They couldn't see the pathogens, couldn't understand the microscopic world that threatened them, but they could observe, experiment and engineer solutions that would keep their people alive. This wasn't luck. This was systematic environmental intelligence operating at the highest level. Archaeological excavations across Europe, the Middle East and India have uncovered something remarkable, deliberate, structured filtration systems built into Iron Age settlements. These weren't crude attempts at water management, they were layered, sophisticated designs that demonstrate a profound understanding of how natural materials interact with water. Excavations have revealed settling pools positioned at specific heights to allow gravity to do its work followed by carefully constructed channels lined with successive layers of materials, each chosen for a specific purpose. The genius lay in the layering. Coarse gravel formed the foundation, allowing water to flow while catching larger debris. Above that, progressively finer grades of sand created a mechanical barrier that trapped smaller particles. And crowning these systems in many cases was a layer of charcoal, a material whose properties our ancestors understood long before modern chemistry could explain why it worked. These filtration beds weren't random assemblages of stone and sand. They represented calculated engineering based on trial, error and generational knowledge passed down through communities that depended on getting it right. Let's descend into the filtration layers and understand the brilliance at work. Charcoal, that blackened remnant of burned wood, possesses a microscopic structure riddled with countless tiny pores. This porous architecture acts like a molecular sponge, absorbing impurities, chemicals, and even some bacteria directly from the water passing through it. Iron Age communities discovered that charcoal didn't just remove visible contaminants, it eliminated the foul tastes and odours that signalled danger, making water not just safer but, well, palatable. The sand and gravel layers served as mechanical filters, but their effectiveness depended entirely on gradation. Coarse materials at the bottom prevented clogging while allowing steady flow. Fine sand near the top caught microscopic particles, slowing the water's passage and giving time for sediment to settle and for the charcoal to work its adsorptive magic. This slow sand filtration principle, which we still use today in modern water treatment facilities, was operating in Iron Age settlements without a single equation or laboratory test. But filtration was just one weapon in their arsenal. Boiling water over fires, understood not as killing microbes but as purifying through heat, was practiced across cultures. The Hippocratic sleeve, a simple cloth bag filter developed around 500 BCE strained out visible sediment. In ancient Egypt, alum was added to turbid water, 
causing suspended particles to clump and settle in a process called coagulation. These societies deployed multi-layered approaches to water safety, combining observation with innovation. Clean water meant more than individual survival. It enabled civilization itself to flourish. Settlements with reliable water purification systems experienced population growth, reduced infant mortality, and the stability needed for cultural advancement. Healthier populations could focus energy beyond mere survival, developing trade networks, advancing metallurgy, and building the foundations of what would become classical civilizations. Water wasn't just life. Pure water was the difference between a struggling hamlet and a thriving community. The cultural significance ran deeper still. Many Iron Age societies imbued water purification with ritual meaning, recognizing its sacred importance. Wells were often built at community centers, protected by stone linings and covers that reflected both practical sanitation and spiritual reverence. The person who maintained the settlement's water systems held a position of profound responsibility, guardian of the community's lifeline. Standing here in our modern world of chemical treatment plants and UV purification, it's humbling to recognize that the fundamental principles remain unchanged. Slow sand filtration, charcoal adsorption, settling pools, these ancient methods are being rediscovered and deployed in developing regions where high-tech solutions are impractical or unaffordable. Our Iron Age ancestors weren't primitive. They were practical scientists working without laboratories, developing solutions through observation and experience that we're still validating with modern research. Their legacy reminds us that innovation doesn't always require technology. Sometimes it requires attention to nature's patterns, willingness to experiment, and the collective wisdom of communities sharing knowledge across generations. These ancient engineers looked at sand, charcoal, and gravity and saw possibility. They turned the earth beneath their feet into a tool for survival. If you found yourself transported back 3,000 years, your advanced knowledge might fail you, but these time-tested methods would keep you alive. That's the kind of foundational wisdom we explore here at The Lost Tactician. If you're hungry for more insights where history, survival, and human ingenuity intersect, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Share this with someone who appreciates how much we can learn from those who came before. Until next time, stay tactical, stay curious, and remember, sometimes the oldest solutions are still the best ones.